It's not even a question, it's a comment that I've been seeing a lot recently and it really bothers me. So you might get Jersey Row for a second. That was something that we could not, not didn't want to, to could not put out there. Is the question of the day. I get it the most, are you pregnant and hiding it? And do you plan on more kids? Welcome back. Today we're doing a quick Q&A video. You guys sent me in the juiciest, most inappropriate, which I love, questions. So let's do that before you guys asked. I asked for questions and you delivered. So why is CJ always with you? Do you ever get a break? Well, he's always with me because he's my son. <laughs> Adam and I both work from home. It is a lot. We do have him in daycare at the gym, which is two and a half hours a day, which is great because it's kind of the best of both worlds. He's still with me. Adam and I, like I said, we both work from home. So if I have a meeting that I need to, I've been doing like a lot of trainings where I have to train new employees. So Adam will take him. If we both have meetings at the same time, that's when we save the iPad for. We just deal with it. But do I ever get a break? Adam is great at giving me a break. Aside from like the meetings, put him in the daycare. They are you guys, I've never, I should do a whole video just on the daycare at this gym because wow, what lifetime fitness, it is expensive. However, it is cheaper for one month for the three of us, the three of us being his daycare, our gym memberships. It's very expensive. I am not going to downplay that. Not going to water it down. It is expensive. They include everything though. And one month for the three of us at the gym where we're all getting benefits is cheaper than one week of daycare of anywhere that I found here. Plus Adam and I share a car, so getting him there would have been an issue. So we decided this is the route we are gonna take. It's working for us for now. They absolutely adore him at daycare. They are so good with him. The security in that daycare is like nothing I've ever seen in my life. Do you guys want a video about it? It is unbelievable. I didn't know to look for these things until like they were doing them. <laughs> this is not an ad. The only reason they know I'm alive is when I like punch in my little, you know, code to get into the gym. I just love them that much. And I hope I answer that. If you want me to answer more about that but no he's not in daycare now except for the two and a half hours a day at the gym and we go pretty much close to seven days a week and they do activities with them they could do like rock climbing when they turn three so he's got a couple more months okay i'm done with that because i feel like i'm doing an ad but i'm not okay how do you deal with online hate this is so funny it just came up in a podcast interview that we did last week but how do you deal with online hate especially talking about controversial topics like prison relationships okay I've been dealing with it for years. Does it get easier? Easier maybe, but not easy. Listen, we all have insecurities. As a woman, as you age, you get, I'm learning way more insecurities. You know, you start seeing things that weren't there before. I got a comment. This is just a perfect timing for a perfect example. I got a comment on a video that I did a couple weeks ago. In that video, I talked about being insecure, aging my looks, blah, blah, blah. I told a story about something that happened to me when I was in college. This is a nutshell version, but if you want the whole story in detail, just go back to that video. I'll link it here or in the description box, wherever YouTube will let me link it. But I talked about how my ex-boyfriend was hitting on my neighbor and told my best friend who she was dating his good friend. My best friend at the time who hooked us up was like, listen, I really love her personality, but I'm not attracted to her physically. And he stayed with me after that. As he's hitting on my roommate. And then, um, can you bring her to the gym? Maybe she, you can help her lose weight. Cause really I'm just not attracted to her physically, but I basically like the benefits that she gives me. You guys can have the story in that video, but in the exact same video, a man posts and he comments, wow. Cause I looked like this in the video. I don't do a lot of makeup anymore. I don't do makeup just for a YouTube video. This is me in all my natural glory. Okay. He goes, wow. Row ages 20 years without, no, he goes, row ages 10 years without 20 pounds of foundation. I did not comment. I reserved my comment about, but I didn't. I reserved those comments. I was like, I'm not going to stoop to that level. But what I appreciated the most about that comment is I had about, I don't know, 10 people in the comments coming to my defense, commenting back to him. And I love you guys for it. Thank you. Because you know what? It's not always easy to put yourself out online. It's not easy to read those comments about yourself. And this is what came up in that video that we did with the skinny with Joey Merlino and little snuff, their podcast. And they were talking about how snuff gets lost in those comments and how he takes them to heart. And Joey's like, I'm a rat, your mother's a rat. <laughs> like he'll comment back to them. And Adam's very much, he don't, doesn't comment back, but he's like, just don't read the comments. It's not that big of a deal. You don't need to know what those people are saying hurtfully about you because you can get 25 positive, beautiful comments. And if you're insecure, 
And let's face it, we all have insecurities, okay? If you're human, you have insecurities. Maybe some of us more than others, especially if you were raised in a certain way, you became a people pleaser, empath, and women, and an aging woman. I promise you, you have insecurities. You're gonna get stuck on those insecurities, on the mean comments, versus the 20 positive comments that counter that. So it's really good. It helps me to see the people that come to my defense. Like I had so much love for you guys that day. And honestly, that was one of the first times that I was able to just laugh. Like if I could afford 20 pounds of foundation every time I do my makeup, I know I'm winning in life because that is very expensive. So um, yeah, haters are just insecure people on the internet. Like how does a man know? Like if I asked Adam, I wish he was here right now because I would have just been like, hey, what's, what is this held at my foundation? He'd be like makeup. And I'd be like, yeah, but like, what do you call this makeup? I don't think he would know it was called foundation. I don't expect men to know these words. So I do know that if you're on the line, online, on the line, if you're online leaving a hateful comment about how I look 20 years older without 20 pounds of foundation, you need to get outside and get some fresh air. But yes, it still hurts and I deal with them and it helps when people come to my defense. And like Adam says, I just have to try to look away, but it's part of put your, putting yourself out there. If you are way too insecure that it's gonna cause you to go into a depression or worse, then I would not suggest putting things online or making all of your accounts private, honestly. Especially, you're right, when it comes to controversial topics, like I've heard things in the past, like your husband deserves to be dead, he deserves every day of that 213 year sentence. You guys know how it is. Prison wives are all dateless, insecure, desperate. I have done some funny parody videos, or I think I put things people say to prison wives. And then there was another one about responses to my haters. I did them both in just like a fun, sarcastic way. So if you're interested in how I respond in a humorous way, cause I just like to be funny or I just like to laugh at things after I get over the hurt and the pain, because I'm not going to lie. That's where my sarcasm comes from. I'll link those as well. Okay. Are you still gardening? How's the balcony garden? That's hysterical that you guys remember that my balcony garden is okay. I'll show you a picture of it. They just painted our condos not that long ago. And they told us like the date, I think it was like June 1st winds up. That's the date that you were supposed to have everything inside if they were starting on your building, but they started at the front of the complex and they worked like zigzag their way through. So I had my plants inside for a while because I'm like, I'm going to follow the rules. I don't want an HOA fee. I don't want a notification. I don't want to mess with the HOA. You know how that goes? So I had them inside and CJ decided he was going to pick all of the leaves off of some of my plants. So I have one, poor guy's half dead. My two cactuses are thriving. I have two aloe plants that are really thriving. I have a spider plant that is starting to choke. I need to change the soil and I need to change the pot so it's bigger, but he's doing well. And then I think what I'm gonna do, I put him inside of a different pot so he's not hanging anymore. I'm going to, I think get a $25 fake one from Amazon that's gonna be hanging and then a fake one in the front because it's hard to keep flowering plants alive in the desert when it becomes the summer. So I'm gonna cheat. I found one that people have great reviews about on Amazon. I'll show you right here somewhere in the video. And I love the balcony garden, but oh, oh, one more thing. So I just recently saw that you could sprout sweet potatoes and they turn into the most gorgeous ivy. And I actually had two sweet potatoes that were starting to sprout and I wasn't gonna use them. So as like a science project with CJ, we're starting to sprout those and they're actually starting to get roots and leaves. I just did it, it's been about two or three weeks. I'm gonna say it's gonna take a couple months, but they look beautiful. That ivy is gorgeous. Something cute and fun you could do with the kids. A science project lesson activity, but that's my um, outside balcony. I wanna add more, but Adam and I promised each other we're not adding more to this condo. We'll be here for a while, but we're trying to save our money because eventually we wanna be in a house. Huh, next question. Will you ever move into a house or do you plan to stay where you are? You always say you're in a tiny condo, but it doesn't seem to be that tiny. It's not that tiny. You're right, it's not, it's not a tiny apartment. It's a three bedroom, two bathroom condo. The reason I say it's tiny is because I feel bad because CJ doesn't have a backyard. He doesn't have like a basement to go play in. We've literally taken all of the furniture except for the couch out of the living room and that has become CJ's playroom because I feel guilty that he doesn't have that play space and he doesn't have an outside, a backyard. That's why I say a teeny tiny condo. And I think I stopped or I'm trying to stop saying that because the commenter is absolutely right. It's not a teeny tiny condo. However, that said, we want a backyard for CJ. We want him to have his own space. We want a place for him inside to play. That's not just like 
a small-ish living room. You know, we want our living room back. So we are saving our money. It's not gonna be for a while, but what we have planned to do, God willing, is we want to leave this place as is. We wanna leave all of the furniture, basically leave everything, the appliances, the furniture, for somebody transitioning out of prison. And we want to move into a house and then take care of it. Like pay the rent for them. We don't own this place, we rent. Pay the rent for them until they're on their feet. Pay it forward. Nobody paid our rent, but this place was furnished for us. You guys sent us almost everything we needed, like all of the appliances, everything we needed for baby. And I wanna pay that forward to somebody else. So that is our plan moving forward. We don't have a house we're looking at right now. We don't really even have the money in the bank for it. Baby steps to get there, that is a goal that we will hopefully eventually reach. You always look so stylish. How and what is your mom's style aesthetic? I love you because 99.9% .9 of the time I am in a sports bra, a tank top or a sweatshirt, depending on the time of year and leggings. That's because we fit in our workouts when we can. So I might get up in the morning and not go to the gym until four o'clock, but I get up, I shower, I put on my workout clothes and I'm ready to go because Adam might have a break and he might say, let's go now. And I'm like, I'm ready. Or if he doesn't have a break and we need to wait because there's that break in the day where the daycare is closed, between two o'clock and four o'clock in the afternoon, then I might take CJ in the stroller for a walk. I don't know if I have a mom aesthetic. I'm actually having a really hard time with fashion right now as I get a little bit older because I know what I like, I know what looks good on my body, but I also wanna be trendy and fun. And I'm having a hard time with like trendy and fun right now because all the styles that are for like young and trendy are the styles when I was in my late teens, early 20s, you know, like that 90s, early 2000s. And I just feel like I, at my age, will look 2000 and late. So it's so hard for me to find like the right pair of jeans and the right pair of shoes to go with it. But by my age, you like know what looks good on your body. You know what styles you like, what colors you like, what you don't like. I stick to a lot of black, a lot of white, throwing colors here and there. I just love fun accessories. I threw this floral applique because that's popular right now. I do a lot of Pinterest, a lot of Instagram fashion people that I love. If you guys want some fashion stuff, my mom style, let me know. As we're moving into the spring and summer months, of course it's more fun, it's easier. How I like look on Pinterest and I see something and I recreate it with what I have in my closet, we could totally do that. I appreciate that, that made my day though, that comment. How do you juggle everything? Work, CJ, house, YouTube, husband, etc. It's like juggling prison wife life. It's a new chapter in your life and you're in it, so you learn it as you go. Have I mastered it? I don't know, I don't think so. You just do it. Like if I'm working and CJ needs me, he needs me. If I'm working and I'm on a meeting and it's really important because I'm the one that's hosting the meeting, then I'll have Adam help me. I have the iPad. I don't give him the iPad all day long. I give him the iPad with his headphones in situations where that's necessary. I know a lot of people are against screen time for children. Do what feels right to you. Have there been meetings where he starts screaming in the background? Yeah, it happened to me the other day. I'm literally on a meeting and he's going, toast and butter because Adam wasn't here and he didn't have a nap that day. So he was getting very cranky and he got hungry. He wanted toast and butter. I fed him before the meeting. I gave him my iPad. My toolbox ran out of tools. Thank God I was on with this young girl and she's like, do you wanna go? And I'm like, okay, listen, let's just finish this because my boss told I need you to do this, this, and this, and this on this meeting. I sat him on my lap. I'm like, we're gonna have a little coworker with us today. And we finished it. It worked out. You do what you gotta do. You make it work. That's it. I would not stress about it. If it's something you're thinking about and you're like, I can't manage it all, you will figure it out. When there's a will, there's a way and you don't know how strong you are until being strong and fitting it all in and together is your only option, I promise. And hello for my prison wives. If you've done that, girl, you could do anything. How do you avoid being influenced on social media? I don't. <laughs> so I do get influenced, I've been victim as we all have to just like quick impulse buying. Sometimes it works out and sometimes I'm like, why did I buy this? This was stupid, it was impulse, I don't even really like it. I have so many different websites with carts full of stuff. I basically window shop by putting things in my cart and then clicking off the website before it's time to buy. Now, like if I just keep thinking about it, thinking about it, I will reconsider. This month, I put myself on a strict no buy because there is something, a goal that I want. It is not the house that we're putting money aside for. So you could have your goal. So you think about that prior to your impulse purchases. But for this, it's something like a little bit more immediate that I want. And it's a little bit more of an expense. It's not huge or like out of my ballpark, but I don't want to just keep spending money and running out my credit card so I told myself strict no buy. The only thing I'm buying is groceries or like if CJ absolutely needs something. Groceries, CJ stuff, 
and then everything else goes to paying down my credit card once i get that paid down hopefully by next month then i can make my big purchase and then no buy until that's paid off for me personally i've been influenced we all have but i have my eyes set on that goal and i think about that like i'm like all right i'm gonna no buy do i want that is that that important to me yes it is so then i'm not gonna make this impulse purchase because i probably won't even want it in a week when I see it. It looks really cute on that influencer. I have a clothes full of closet that look equally as cute on me. You know what I mean? So there's a tip, I guess. I don't know, I'm just trying it now, but it's been working for the past month. And dopamine hit is my credit card bill going down. So, or my credit card um, statement going down, right? So you get dopamine in that moment when you buy something, you're influenced and you're like, yay, you received the package, dopamine, yay. But it wears off pretty quickly and you're on to the next thing. That's going to the side of your closet, eventually maybe getting donated, if not just collecting dust, taking up space because you're looking for the next dopamine hit, just replace that dopamine hit with the dopamine hit that you get when you see your statement and your credit card bill going down because I promise you that's going to be a better dopamine hit when you don't owe all that money and you don't have the interest piling up. It's working for me. Okay. How do you stay so muscular and in shape? Oh my gosh, thank you. So I stay so muscular because I'm very, very, very consistent with my workouts. You guys know that's been my thing for years since the early 2000s. When I first started um, competing in fitness, 2006 was my last show. So I guess I competed, started in 2003, did six shows in three years, stopped in 2006, stopped competing in fitness, but I still like did CrossFit workouts and all kinds of stuff. It's been something that Adam and I bonded over for as long as our relationship lasted we always tell each other like you're my favorite workout partner it is the god's god's honest truth we influence each other we're both very trained in fitness that like i can look at him and be like you know you're arching your back on this lift he just says to me all the time like tighten your abs you have to be very secure that he's not telling you because adam is so complimentary i can get in my head right because i have been very consistent with the with the gym but i've been very inconsistent with my eating now that said, I don't, we don't eat fast food. I don't eat sugar. I don't eat junk like bags of Doritos or anything like that, but I've just been eating way too much food and too much. My macros are off. I don't count macros, but I know my fat is way too high right now. And I've put on about 15 pounds since the year I was walking every year. So like in a year and a half, I've put on 15 pounds. I screwed up my hormones. I did boom, 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 five or six things all at the same time. Looking back now, screwed me up and I gained weight rapidly. I could do a whole video about that if you guys want, but I'm saying that to say like I'm in my head, especially that weight hormonally has been showing up a lot in my gut. Muffin top that I've never had. Like I had a six pack a year and a half ago. So if he says tighten your core, he, I can't hear that as, oh my God, he thinks I have a big belly. Cause he doesn't. He tells me I'm beautiful all the time. I hear that as tighten your core for this lift. See what I'm saying? I don't know, maybe that was a tangent. Yes, that was a tangent, but I have a really good workout partner. I'm very consistent with the gym. So if you're asking because you want to know what to do, it's consistency. So start baby steps, maybe start eliminating sugar, start eliminating soda, eliminating smoking, of course. Uh, maybe start going for walks, whatever you can start slowly and then you add and build, you guys know. Okay, this question is the question of the day. I get it the most. You guys have been asking me this for years, although I might look like it, people ask me, are you pregnant and hiding it? And do you plan on more kids? No, I just explained to you guys, I have gained a lot of weight and I've gained a lot of weight in my midsection based off of a whole bunch of things that I did, too many things at the same time that were working negative against me, my age, my hormones, and I gained weight very, very, very rapidly. I'm up right now and I'm up a lot in my belly and my lower body. When I originally gained that weight, I had a neighbor ask me, she's like, girl, are you having another baby? Or she goes, don't tell me you're pregnant again. And I'm like, well, I'm not because I'm not. <laughs> I just said, I just gained some weight. And I noticed it in the video that I did and I tried to crop it, but this might be where the question was coming from. I was dyeing my hair, I did a vlog and I had just a sports bra on because I dye my hair, put it in, let it set. And usually it's just in a sports bra so I could just kind of take that off and hop in the shower and not get dye on my clothes. And I did, I, I looked like I did when I was pregnant with CJ, probably at like, 18 weeks. It took me a little while to pop with him. No, I'm not pregnant. I just gained some weight. Do I want another baby? Adam and I talk about it all the time. We would love another baby. I honestly don't know if it's possible at this point. I haven't endured like that perimenopause phase in life. So again, I don't know if it's possible for me at my age and I don't want to wait much longer. It's not for lack of trying. We'll put it out there. Okay. It's not for lack of trying. It just hasn't happened. And I don't know if 
humanly possible, it will happen. And Adam keeps like, being like, don't say that, stop. It's not a don't say that, stop situation. It's a, it hasn't happened. And I'm at that, you know, my biological clock is at like 11.59, we'll say, you know, Dip, click and it's over. So am I against it? No, I would say like within the next like six months, year, and then it might be over. Do I plan on having more kids? I would love to have one more. Going through it, being pregnant, having a baby, the postpartum, taking off the baby weight, all at my, you know, nursing, up all night at my age is gonna be tough and it is all 100% sacrifice I am willing and want to make to give CJ a sibling. I don't want him to be an only child, but that might be the path in life that, you know, is destin destiny for him if I can't have another child. So there's my answer. No, I'm not at this moment at all pregnant. Do I plan to be? I don't plan to be. <laughs> I'll say it like that, you know, and God's will will happen. I'm not religious, but I believe in God and God's will will happen. I hope that answered your question, but I get that. That is the number one most asked question. And I understand why when I had CJ, I'm like, I'm going to get right back on the horse. We're going to have two under two. Didn't happen. And I'm kind of glad that didn't happen because one at two and a half has been a lot. I love every single second of it, but doesn't mean it's every single day of life with a toddler is easy. If I said that it was, I'd be 100% lying to you and I don't wanna lie to you. Oh, here's a bonus. Okay, here's a bonus, speaking about lying to you because here's another comment. It's not even a question, it's a comment that I've been seeing a lot recently and it really bothers me. So you might get Jersey Row for a second, but hear me out when I say this. People have been commenting about how when I started Strong Prison Wives and Families and my YouTube channel, I said that Adam and I knew each other before he went to prison. Okay, and I said that and I stood on, on that for years. And then when he got out, we were able to, we told you guys the truth that we met while he was incarcerated. Now I've been getting a lot of backlash for that. Like you should have taken that to the grave. You know, I lost respect for you. This was something that Adam and I had a long conversation about and discussed that if we were going to share our experiences online to help people, that was something that we could not, not didn't want to, to could not, put out there. He was a lifer at the time. And the only way that I could go visit him was to submit this form that said that we knew each other before. Otherwise, we, I wouldn't be allowed to visit him. And as much as I love helping people who need my help, I am not sacrificing myself and my relationship. And at the time, all the time that I had with my husband in person was visit for eternity, forever, until we got this overturned. But at the time, we didn't know if that would be the case. I could have been existing in a visit room. That could have been my relationship for the rest of my life. And I wasn't willing to sacrifice that to put online the truth. Why I didn't take that to the grave is because I felt like I owed you guys the truth. Adam and I live very transparently. That's the one thing that we didn't tell you guys the truth about. And you need to respect and understand why. And if you lost all respect for me, because I was asked that question a million times, and if you go back and watch old interviews, I hated that question. I hated answering that question. You could hear me getting nervous. You could hear, you could see my body language, hated it. You could see that I would always change a subject. What you can't say online, because people can be straight up what you can't say is that's an answer. That's a question that I don't answer. I mean, I can say that, but you know what people are going to do? They're going to Google you. They're going to look into the background. They're going to contact your employer. They're going to find your family's Facebook page for their business. And they're going to write harassing, hateful comments. They're going to contact your HR department and they're going to say stuff about you. And they're going to dig up stuff about your personal life until they either find the answer or harass you until they feel that they're going to make you give them the answer. Do you know how I know that? Because it all happened to me. My HR at the time, the job I was working for, somebody started a LinkedIn page called Adam Clausen Nasty Felon, something along those lines. They reached out, like I said, my family's business, their Facebook page where you could leave reviews and they left a review that how dare you support this family and eat at their restaurant because their daughter, daughter supports a murder. I'm sorry, who did he kill? contacted my HR department. She's with this guy. Look at the LinkedIn page, the fake LinkedIn page, Adam Claus and Nasty Fellow that they made, sent that to my HR department for the company that I was working for at the time. That by the way, did not fire me. I moved. But just so you know, this is the extent that people will go to if you say something along the lines of, 
you know, that's something I choose not to discuss. They feel entitled to those answers. They, not you. So that is why I lied. And if you lost respect for me because I withheld the truth and made up a little story so I could help thousands of women. And then I came and I told you the truth because I felt guilty and bad about it. And don't take my word for it that I felt guilty and bad about it. Look at the other interviews I did. Look at how uncomfortable I was in my body language. My story was made up and I hated every second of that. But if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have helped 100,000 people over 11 years. If you still have lost respect for me and you still think I should have taken that one to the grave because I felt so guilty and Adam's like, I'm not living like that with a lie. We're transparent about everything because that's how we help people with our story. So now that we can be honest about it, we are. We could not before or I would have lost my visits. The only way that I could have spent time in person, in the flesh with my husband. And the person who said that has a loved one who's locked up for a really long time. So I don't know about that, but there's my Jersey row for you guys. She comes out every once in a while. I just don't like to be harassed like that, nor does anybody. I'm not saying you should make up stories about your life. However, if you do need to protect yourself and then you come out and you're like, listen, I was dishonest about this and this is why. And it's a totally understandable, relatable, could be you situation. But I decided to make up this little story. Here is why. Here would be the repercussions if I didn't. I wouldn't be able to spend time in real life with my husband and I wouldn't be able to help all of you if I didn't. Oh my God, you guys, I ran out of space. <gasps> oh, I ran out of storage. I keep buying new storage and I keep running out. I just wanted to add this. I'm so curious what you think, what your thoughts are in the comments. I would love to know about the little white lie or maybe big lie. I don't know. What do you think? Do you understand where I'm coming from? I know I got a little pa a lot passionate about that, but I hope if you put yourself in my shoes, then you can understand why we did that and why we decided to come clean because we don't like living with that lie. But that's all I wanted to add. Check out Anna Luisa. All of the information will be linked in the description box below. I cannot wait to make outfits with this. Loving this. Can't wait to get the next one. Let me know what you guys think. We could start a whole collection together. If you find something you like, I might like it too. Click the link in the description box below. Let me know what you get. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.